hello guys welcome to the fourth episode of the safari video series and in case you are yet to watch the previous episodes i will drop a link in the description area make sure you find time and check those videos out in today's video we will continue from where we stopped in the last episode make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't so that you won't miss out anytime i upload a new video because on this channel I upload fashion designing content regularly for both male and female using pattern drafting which is the world standard method in clothing construction. And guys, please support me by watching ads on my videos. Please don't skip those ads because that is how I get rewarded here on YouTube. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. My name is Bolaji and this is Reggie School of Fashion. In the last episode, we drafted, cut, and attached the pockets. And here is the final result. Okay, on both pieces. So you can see what we have. So the next step is to join the pieces together. After attaching the pockets, the next step is to join the pieces together. Fabrics to fabrics and lining to lining. So here is the back panel for the fabrics. This is going together with the front panel and here is a lining for the back panel and here is a lining for the front panel so this is going together with this and this is going together with this okay so fabric to fabric first so i'll be taking one of these that is one of the front panel and one of the back panel the positioning is the right side facing the right side. There is a side that will match each other. Center must fall at the center and sides at the side. The armhole is the side of the fabric and the neckline is the center of the fabric. So the same thing is applied on the back panel. Here is the side and here is the center. Now I position my fabric right side facing the right side and this is what I have. You can see this is not matching. Here is a side. Here is a side for the back and here is a side for the front. It means this piece is not meant to be together with this. So I will just drop this and pick other one. You can see this match properly. Side to side and center to center. Now I'm not joining on the center. I will only be joining by the side like so. So this is going together like so, and I will be joining the sides together with one inch seam allowance I added. So also, I will pick the second piece as well. Right side facing the right side. So I will hold it like so, side to side. So you can see what I'm having, side to side. You can see my notches matches properly. Can you see what I'm having? So this is going together with this. And this is going together with this. So now I will be joining all the linings together. So this is for the back and this is for the front. One piece of front and one piece of the back. Like so, here is the back, here is the front rather. This is the center, the neckline and the ham O. So this is the back for the lining. You can see the ham O. is matching can you see what i have 
so i'll be joining the two sides together don't forget only the side okay then i will be stitching with one inch seam allowance i added so for this piece so this is the second side of the lining i will place this also right side facing the right side Now the four pieces are ready for stitching. I will take them to my sewing machine and I will join the sides together with one inch seam allowance. I will be doing this off the camera and I will be back to show you the next step. So guys, I've joined the pieces together and this is what I have after joining. So this is one side of the fabric. As you can see, this side is for the front and this side is for the back. Okay, and this is the second piece. And I have two pieces for the lining as well. So this side is for the front and this side is for the back. So this is the first piece and this is the second piece. So the next step is to join the center back together. Okay, so don't forget we open up the center back because of the vents we have. You can see the vent allowance. So because of that, we open up the center back. So we'll be joining the center back together and stop on the vent points which is here okay so i will take one piece of the fabric facing the other side of the fabric like so fabric to fabric and lining to lining so we are still applying that row so you can see i have back side facing each other like so then i'll position it right side facing the right side notches matching each other So this is what I have. Then I will be stitching with half of an inch seam allowance I added from the neckline downwards and I will stop on the vent point. You can see the shape I have here. So this is the vent point. So I will stop the stitching here like so. So you can see I have the two fabrics together now. So you can see what I have. So I will be joining the center together like so. So after joining, I will have something like this on the right side. So at this point, I will have the front and the back panels joined together. You can see here is the back and here is the front. Then I will be applying the same method on the lining. Okay, right side facing the right side and I will join the center back together. Okay, so I'll be doing this and I'll be back to show you the next step. So guys, I've joined the center back together, as you can see. And this is what I have after joining. Okay, I stitched from the neckline points and I stopped on the vent points. Okay, so here is the fabric and here is the lining. Okay, so when I was stitching, I run the stitches twice. This is to secure the center back of the safari suit because it is a male outfit. Okay, so I run the stitches the first time and I run it the second time. So the next step is to give this a good press. I will open up all the seam allowances I have inside the safari suit, both the fabric and the lining. So I'll open it up like so. I'll give it a press. Open this up also, give it a press. This also, okay, and this side as well. And I will repeat the same process on the lining. So after giving it a press, the next step is to join the shoulders together. So then this is what I will be doing. You can see here is the right side of the fabric and this is the wrong side of the fabric. When joining the shoulders together, this is going to be right side facing the right side, like so. Right side of the front facing the right side of the back. You can see what I'm doing here. This is the front panel. And this is the back panel. The right side of the front panel 
facing the right side of the back panel. You can see this is the back panel that is next to this front panel. And this is the back panel that is next to this front panel as well. This on this and this on this. Like so. So here is the shoulder line. So I'll pick the shoulder lines together like so. And with the help of the notches I have there, I will make sure the two notches meet. And I will secure that with my sewing pins. Like so. Then the other side, right side of the front panel, facing the right side of the back panel. Shoulder line to shoulder line. Can you see what I have? Okay, so after joining, I will have something like this on the wrong side. And turning this to the right side, I will have it like so. Can you see what I have? You can see our safari suit is coming out well already. So can you see what I have? Okay, so this is how the right side will look like after joining. And you can see the vent I have here. When I'm giving this a press, I will iron the vent allowance inward as well. Okay, so I will iron it inward like so. I will give it a press. I will iron it inward. And I will I'll fold it inward and I will give it a press. I will fold this inward as well. And I will give it a press. So I will be doing all this off the camera. And I will be back to show you the next step, which is the sleeve. So guys, I've joined the shoulders together, as you can see. So here is for the fabric, and this is for the lining. So this is what I have after joining the shoulders together. So now I have the fabric as a single piece, and I have the lining also as a single piece. So the next step is to go into the construction of the sleeve. In adding sleeve to a safari suit, this can either be a long sleeve or a short sleeve. This depends on your preference. But what you have to put at the back of your mind is it has to be a two-piece sleeve because it is a suit. Suit usually goes with two-piece sleeve. Two-piece sleeve is the same thing as tailored sleeve. Tailored sleeve is the same thing as suit sleeve. You can call it two-sleeve, tailored sleeve, two-piece sleeve or jacket sleeve. They all mean the same. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will be attaching a two-piece short sleeve to my safari suit, which I've drafted already, okay? If you don't know how to make a two-piece sleeve, I have a well-detailed tutorial already on how to draft a two-piece sleeve. It is a long sleeve. If you want to make a short two-piece sleeve, all you need to do is to reduce the measurement to the desired short sleeve length, plus you will not add the elbow measurement. Apart from these two, every other step remains the same. Okay, the video has been linked up in the description area. Make sure you watch the video so that you can proceed in attaching a sleeve to your safari suit. Here I have my pattern. You can see for a basic sleeve, the pattern is usually a single pattern. But here I have it in two pieces. That is why it is called a two-piece sleeve. Okay, I have the front and the back on this piece and I have the front and the back on this piece as well. This is the upper sleeve and this is the under sleeve, okay? And I cut this out on my fabric. Two pieces of this for fabric and two pieces for the lining. For the under sleeve as well, two pieces for this fabric, two pieces for the lining. Okay, so now I will be showing you how to construct a two-piece sleeve. In constructing a two-piece sleeve, I will be taking one of the upper sleeve and one of the under sleeve. So here is the wrong side and this is the right side. So I will position the two right side facing the right side. This is the right side for the under sleeve and this is the wrong side for the under sleeve. 
okay so i'll position it right side facing the right side so don't worry all your concentration should be by the side of the sleeve you don't need to focus on the center okay so i will be holding the two like so So I will pin the two together. So and I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance by the side. So this seam allowance has been added when I was drafting the pattern. So I will stitch this side with half of an inch and I will move this closer as well. And I will stitch with half of a knee. Okay, so after joining, this is what I will have for my sleeve. You can see what I'm having. Okay, and also, before you do this, make sure you indicate the front and the back. You can see on my pattern. I label this side as the front and this side as the back because the front sleeve is different from the back sleeve and on my fabric I already placed notches on the front of the sleeve so with the notches I will be able to know the front you can see my notches here so this is the front of my sleeve so make sure you place notches on your fabric so that you will know where the front falls so after joining the two together I will be having something like this so I will put this aside and work on the second piece. So please ignore this mark. Here is the right side and this is the wrong side. So this is the front of my sleeve. This is the front side. So make sure you place notches when you are making yours. Okay. So I will be placing the two on each other like so and I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance on both sides. Just the same way I pinned these together. Okay. Also, again, please place notches in order to indicate front and back. Also, make sure you watch my video on how to draft a male blazer suit sleeve. I explain into details the easiest way you can place notches on your fabric. So I'll be painting this as well. So I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance on both sides. And I will be repeating the same process on the sleeve, on the lining rather. So I will be repeating the same process on the lining. One of the upper sleeve and one of the under sleeve. Right side facing each other. Like so. Right side facing each other like so okay so make sure back falls to back and front falls on front place notches so that you will know where the front falls and where the back falls so i'll be taking this to my sewing machine and i will stitch the sides together and i'll be back to show you the next step so guys i've joined the upper sleeve and the under sleeve together as you can see so this is for the fabric and this is for the lining after which i gave it a good press i opened up the seam allowance you can see what i have i opened it up and i gave it a good press so after that the next step is to gather the edges of the sleeve that is the sleeve edge you can see the shape i have here i have to gather this because when we are cutting or drafting a two-piece sleeve automatically we usually have a wider measurement around here which is more than what we have on the armhole that is number one number two is in order to have that curvy shape on the sleeve head this side has to be gathered together okay so that is why i will be running a stitch around here don't forget i have half of an inch of seam allowance around the edges of the sleeve you can see this is the under sleeve i'm not tampering with the under sleeve so i will only be working on the upper sleeve which is here so i will stitch from here this has to be on the wrong side so i will stitch from here using like one quarter of an inch so that is half of half of an inch 
so i will stitch all around that is a gather stitch so you must make use of the longest stitch you have on your sewing machine so i will stitch and at the beginning of the stitch make sure you have a long you have a long thread and don't lock your stitches so i will stitch all around then when i get to the end as well i will pull out my thread i will make sure i have enough thread to pull the stitches together and i will not i will not lock my stitches as well so these are the ones i've done here so after stitching all around then i gather this i pull it together i pull it together i pull it until i have the measurement i have on my armhole so here is the armhole when i took the measurement of the armhole i have 20 inches and when i took the measurement of this before gathering i have 25 inches so when i run the stitches all around i gathered it okay i gathered it until when i have 20 inches on the armhole so with this the sleeve will be able to fit in to fit inside the armhole all around okay so here is for this and this is for the second one okay i did for the lining as well and i left this so that i will be able to use this to explain to you guys so i'll be doing this as well after which i will attach the sleeve to the bodies so this is the lining and this is the lining lining is going together with lining and sleeve is going together with sleeve so i will be peeling this all around so that you guys can see and understand what i'm talking about so now I will be showing you how to attach the sleeve to the bodies. So here is the sleeve. After gathering, don't forget, I told you this has to be done on the upper sleeve alone. This is the upper sleeve and this is the under sleeve. So I gathered the upper sleeve from edge to edge. Okay, and I took the measurement. I confirmed I have 20 inches, which I have on the arm or on the bodies. So the next step is to open this up like so can see what i'm doing i open it up then i will notch the center at the upper part okay so with this i know the center of the sleeve so in attaching the sleeve the sleeve will be on the right side so i'll be turning this to the right side like so and the bodies will be on the wrong side you can see I have it on the wrong side. Okay, so here is the arm O. So when you are attaching the sleeve, make sure the front arm O falls on the front sleeve and the back sleeve falls on the back arm O. Okay, so here is the side. This is the side. This is the shoulder line. So the side on the bodies will fall on the center which i notched here so i will take this here is the m line of the sleeve i will insert it inside the armhole like so then i will place the notch point which is here to match with the side of the sleeve so with this i have right side of the bodies facing the right side of the sleeve like so and i will pin the two together So then I will spread this inside and make sure the edges align. So here I will paint from here. Don't forget this is the under sleeve. So this is around the underarm. So I will paint all around and I will stop before the gathering point. okay so when i get to this point i will stop and i'll move to the other side so i will repeat the same process so you can see what i'm having here my dart points and the journey i have on the sleeve the both match each other you can see what i'm having so which means my cutting is correct okay my measurement my cutting is correct and what i have here also matches each other 
no excess, no shortage. So when you are drafting the pattern, you must do things accurately so that when you get to the construction parts, you will not have any issue. So if you are here to watch the drafting parts of this tutorial, I will link the video up in the description area. Make sure you find time to watch the video after watching this current one. So after painting the underarms, you can see what I have, both the front and the back, then I will move to the upper sleeve. So may looking at this, you can see the both align. No shortage and no excess. Then I will pin them together. So when you gather your sleeve, please let me give you this clue. You can see the thread I used in gathering my upper sleeve. You can see I have a very long thread on both edges. So when you are gathering, after gathering, don't lock your stitches. In case you have an excess or shortage on the upper sleeve. So you'll be able to adjust this if you have not locked it. But if you have your stitches locked, you will not be able to do any adjustments around here. You can see what I'm having here. I can move this if I have an excess and if I have a shortage, I can spread it more. Okay, but as for me, I have an accurate measurement. But for the under sleeve, there is nothing you can do if you have a shortage. So make sure you get your drafting right from the onset. So when you are drafting your two-piece sleeve, if you have any question or there's a point you don't understand correctly, make sure you drop your question at the comment section. I'll be there to attend to them all. Now I've pinned the sleeve and the bodies together all round. When I'm ready to attach the sleeve together with the bodies, so I will just hold it like so to my sewing machine and I will stitch with half of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so when you are attaching your sleeve, make sure you do this inside. Okay, so that you'll be able to see the gatherings you have on your sleeve clearly. So I will be stitching with half of an inch all round. So I will do this for this side. And I've pinned the other side of the armhole. This is what I have. So this is what I have. So when I'm ready to attach it, I will attach this all around. Then to the lining, I will repeat the same process. When we are making a suit with lining, don't forget this is a safari suit with lining. You can make a safari suit without lining, but this is a safari suit with lining. Lining makes it look more gorgeous and elegant on the wearer. Okay, so that is why I'm attaching lining. If it's going to be a safari suit without lining, the process might not be as long as this. So every process I did on the bodies will be applied to the lining as well. So here I have the two sleeves, I've gathered one, I will gather the second one as well. So here is the arm O for the lining. And I will attach this. When we are making a safari suit with lining, it's more or less like making two dresses at the same time. Okay? So guys, thanks so much for watching this video to this point. And let's meet in the last episode of this video series where we'll be completing the whole process of our safari suit making till then always do remember there is no elevator to success you have to take the stairs